But I came from the broadcasting profession, uh, and I thought mediation was interesting because of a little story I'll tell you about uh, an intervention that we did in GWR, uh, which is now called HART, uh, and um, it really did transform the way the business operated. And as I trained as a mediator with the mediation and business uh, group, it just struck me actually there were a lot of similarities between what we achieved um, in the story I'm about to tell you and what you could achieve by using mediation uh, in a similar manner. Um, one of the issues in broadcasting, one of the things you constantly need to do is to improve the performance of the talent, uh, the people who are on And the key uh, meeting that needs to take place regularly is between the programme director of the radio station and the people who are actually doing the programmes on the air. Typically the programme director will not be as successful as a presenter as the people who are on the air. Uh, my case in point there is when I went to Classic FM, I used to have to tell Simon Bates what to do. Well, I phrased it wrongly there, of course, because I didn't tell him what to do. Uh, I'd go through his programme with him. Of course, he's uh, been a very successful presenter probably for more years than I've lived, let alone for more years than I've lived in the broadcasting <laughs> career. So you need to find a way to have that conversation, difficult conversation. Uh, in a way that would, be, uh, that would be constructive and would lead to both sides coming out of it feeling that they had a good experience. Now what I discovered was because those were difficult conversations, but they were vital conversations, they were not taking place nearly as often as they should do. So when I was a regional manager director for a while, I'd go around to the radio station I looked after uh, and say, so when did you last talk to your breakfast show presenter? Oh, well, he had to go to the dentist last week, I had the car service the week before. These meetings were never taking place. Uh, it was because neither side felt equipped to have the conversation. So what can we do to try and make that better? So um, I was human resources director of the group at the time, uh, and discovered the solution was to introduce a coaching culture. So we introduced a wide-ranging um, training program, which coached the program controllers, trained the program controllers and the on their staff in the techniques of coaching and in being coachee as well, horrible word, but the, the techniques of being coached as well. And that separated the performance of the personal and the coaching techniques, let the program controllers have those difficult meetings, allowed them to intervene more effectively to improve the sound of their station. The presenters were protected from the sometimes destructive effects uh, of the untutored and insensitive guidance that they've been offered in the past. So a very interesting and effective um, uh, intervention. What I noticed amongst the program staff generally was the esprit de corps were a lot better. Uh, you probably don't really hear radio sessions where people are miserable you can actually detect sometimes a bit of angst between uh, the different presenters who are on the air. Uh, Radio One's particularly good, they've had every five years, they have a sort of uh, explosion where some people is, is nasty about his colleagues. So it was a man, uh, I noticed, rather than the female presenters who do that. Anyway, this really cool saw, so much so that then the interesting thing happened that we had the um, other departments, uh, the, the other key performance department of commercial radio station is the people who go outside the advertising. So the other department said, well, we'd like to do the coaching as well. And so the people I hadn't originally thought of training, I thought, well, actually, you know, why would they want to be trained in that, uh, that technique, saw it was so effective amongst their programming colleagues that they wanted the same thing. So we did do that. We trained the advertising sales people. And you have measures in both of those um, areas. Of course, the advertising sales income, as far as that side is concerned, revenue, uh, and the program uh, audience results, as far as the programming side is concerned. Both of those uh, were raised after um, uh, introducing this coaching approach. So if you transform the experience of uh, the objective of enabling a whole company to think as mediators into the story I've just told you, then think about how that might be. So I think you understand the process of mediation, the thing it's supposed to do um, is, is to create that win-win situation where there's a lack of, um, of uh, oppositional thinking in an organisation, much more collaborative thinking. Now, as I said, I've never worked in the law, so I, I don't quite know how the the end result of what you're doing influences the personal relationships you have within a law firm. Uh, I, I doubt I was at uh, Mike's uh, firm today talking to his uh, regional senior partner, and uh, I didn't notice anybody in the coffee room saying, I put it to you that you should have sugar in your coffee or anything like that. But I, I think if we get that sort of collaborative rather than confrontational feeling going with organisations, then that, uh, that must be a good thing. Um, so if you were to take the mediation approach and try and make it a company wide thing, what would you do? Well, to, to follow the GWR example, the first people to, to be trained would be the chief executive of the board. Uh, and that would give a clear signal to the rest of the company that the organisation was serious about uh, the transformation it was trying to come up with. 
Having been trained, the CEO and the board would be seen to walk the talk and applying their new understanding to situations as they arose. And the training would then cascade down through the organisation. Of course, you wouldn't train everyone in the same way. Uh, different levels would be trained in different ways, different levels of detail and intensity, needed for different parts of the business. But whether someone goes on a four-day residential course uh, or hears about mediation and toolbox talk uh, in a workshop one morning, then everyone should be touched by the new approach. I think what I was trying to um, think of as I translated that coaching culture experience uh, into the whole company mediation experience will be to try and get a position where, <clears throat> from business as usual, you move to a mediation approach. So in business as usual, there's often a division between the staff and the managers. Mediation approach would tend to create, I think, a lack of hierarchy. Communications in business as usual are too often on a need-to-know basis, open and transparent on a mediation approach. There's a high conflict risk in business as usual, people get into arguments, a low conflict risk in uh, the mediation approach. Your suppliers, people outside the organisation, squeeze on costs in the business as usual approach um, uh, in partnership in a mediation approach. What I was trying to get to was an idea that if every business decision was taken with an internal mediation approach, you're not going to take every position, uh, every, every decision for two people on uh, either side of the position. Uh, then that would lead to a, a much different way of uh, business operating. The benefits of the mediation approach would be produced if you could go down that route. And it's the thought processes you would need to affect, and that's why this, this training process is so interesting. That if you could train people to have the thought process associated with mediation, even if they were not in the mediation session itself, then I think you'd arrive at each decision point thinking, if I was mediating this issue, what would the outcome be? Now, I hesitate to try and uh, summarise what you might think if you come to a decision with a confrontational approach, but maybe it would be how am I going to win this one? Uh, how am I going to win this one and how is the other person going to lose me if you're being uh, really oppositional about it? So, that thought of that mindset, if I was mediating this issue, then what might the outcome be? Our understanding of ourselves drives our actions in the workplace and elsewhere. If we think of ourselves as independent, self interested individuals, the traditional uh, free market capitalism view of how we like us, then we drive ourselves forward without any real concern for what's happening to those around us. But I think the increasingly networked nature of modern life means that we're not homo economicus, we're homo humanus. Much more appropriate. We're all interconnected and independent. Whatever we do has effects on those around us. Our motivations are not purely economic, they're social as well. We gauge our success, our satisfaction with life by the relationships we build at work and elsewhere, as well as the material things we accumulate for ourselves. I guess that background, the opportunities for developing a whole company mediation approach must be increasing. You've got the foundations in place with the uh, mediation in business uh, organisation setting up. Mediation is increasingly a value tool within the operations of organisations dealing with individual things that need to be solved. And I think the next step is to take the foundations and build on them a whole company mediation based philosophy. It would be an experiment, as I've explained, a similar experiment worked very well in my business career, but any transformation, of course, is an experiment. Whoever takes on the challenge, maybe somebody in this room this evening, they've got nothing to lose and a great deal to gain. <laughs>